I'm going to speak to you today about cemetery vegetation. Usually when you think of preserving a cemetery, you think of the monuments and the markers. That's what most of us do think about. And the care of the markers is one of the most important things that usually comes to mind when you take care of a cemetery. So why is it important to preserve cemetery vegetation? So today I'm going to share with you a little bit about the importance of preserving historic cemetery vegetation and the basics of the preservation. I'll outline a multi-step process, all of which some may apply to a cemetery you're working with today, and some may not. Except for perhaps the earliest colonial cemeteries, or graveyards as they were known, and cemeteries that are located in isolated areas, vegetation has always played an important role in the memorial and aesthetic quality of a cemetery. Beginning in the, late, uh, in the early 1800s, around 1830, cemetery development moved from the centers of large cities into the rural landscape. With this change came an increase in plantings in these cemeteries, and they were overseen by, usually by private cemetery associations that often directed by horticultural societies. And with this came a lot of new varieties of vegetation into these cemeteries. And as Jason mentioned, they became tourist attractions, <laughs> especially the large ones. Although vegetation, planted, although vegetation planted in early cemeteries varied by region, some ornamental species are typically found within historical cemeteries. These include the weeping willow, cedars, and other evergreen trees, boxwoods, holly, yucca, lily, roses, iris, and English ivy. Now, I'm from the north, so there's probably a lot more down here that I'm not aware of yet, and you can inform me of that today. Many of these plant types can also be found in the cemetery monuments. Kind of coincided together. Smaller community cemeteries began to follow the style of the large rural cemeteries just on a more modest scale. Formal plantings in this type of cemetery might have included an LA of, tree, uh, of trees or perhaps um, a um, bed of plant, uh, like a formal planting bed at the beginning of the cemetery or individual graveside plantings. So when work begins on an abandoned cemetery, where do you begin? How do you know what vegetation dates to the historic period? The first thing you want to do is gather information. Now, I'm looking for a particular kind of information when I'm looking for vegetation. Um, and it's sometimes a little more difficult to find. Uh, the first plan of action should gather as much as you can. And I've listed a few, a few places up there. Uh, Aura interviews is also an excellent one. The types of references you might find, uh, old maps, photographs, postcards, as Jason mentioned, and if you're lucky enough to get some information um, from the cemetery itself. And even if you get lucky enough <laughs> to find a trove of historic documents and photographs, determining what vegetation needs to be removed can be a difficult task or should be removed. You need to sort out what plants to keep and what plants to remove. <laughs> Basically, which plants were planted for their ornamental qualities, sentimental values, or as grave markers? And which plants took root on their own, either as volunteer offspring of ornamental vegetation from the cemetery or from off-site? So where do you begin to cut? Where do you cut first? A good way to begin is to identify all the self-seeders. Uh, these are plants um, that have come into the area. They were not purposely planted. And the best way to do that is look for known invasive plant species in your area. These species were often brought in as ornamental plants from other parts of the country, or they may have come in as contaminants in um, uh, feed, like for livestock or feed for seeding um, agricultural fields. So you want to identify those. Invasive species found in cemeteries will vary from region to region. This is one site I found online for Texas invasives. Uh, it gives you a, a, a tip or a list um, of the top in, uh, invasive species in Texas. Another site is the US Forest Service has what they call the dirty dozen species in Texas, and they vary somewhat, but it's a good resource. 
But you need to keep in mind that some ornamental species classified as invasive may have been purposely planted in the cemeteries. And likewise, native species can also take root in the landscape if maintenance is neglected. So you gotta, it's not always clear cut. But look for plants that are out of place. Look for plants that are growing in what, was a, what appears to be a pathway or is a pathway. Look for plants that are growing out of the base or very close to the edge of, of a monument. It's not a guarantee, but those are likely invasive plants. Keep in mind, though, that a lot of these plants would spread on their own, such as bulbs and vines, and they may have origins to that cemetery and perhaps a close by site. So you don't want to just, you got to be careful on those. Um, with an ivy, you could try trailing it back to its thickest stem. That might give you some indication as to where it originally uh, it originated from. Then I suggest you proceed with caution. Once you've done the initial cutting, and so now you can see your cemetery, you have a view of it. Just like with any work you do in preservation, you want to do no harm. So you want to be careful um, removing uh, any, any uh, vegetation once you've done the initial clearing. But you can look for clues that can help you fine tune that landscape. You can look at the size of the plant to help you decide if it belongs or not, the plant type, and you can look for patterns. First look at the plant size and try to determine if it might have existed during the historic period. This will probably be easiest to do with trees, but keep in mind that some trees grow faster than others, so it's, it's not a for sure. Also consider how long it's been since the cemetery was abandoned uh, or routine maintenance has occurred. If no one has cared for the cemetery in the last 50 years, some trees may, that may appear very large uh, could in fact be volunteers. Next, try to determine what type of species would have been planted in the, during the, in the cemetery during the historic period. If you're lucky enough to have photographs or documentation, you may be able to identify some of these plant types. Another resource might be documentation from other cemeteries in the area, as vegetation planted as memorials in some cemeteries uh, in the region may be the same. And finally, you can look at, consult books that talk about typical plants that would have been found in cemeteries. So those are some more clues. And last, look for patterns. Look for pattern plantings that indicate there would have been a formal planting. Uh, that might include an alley of trees, as depicted here. And again, if the cemetery is overgrown, it might not be obvious at first. Uh, a line of shrubs or plantings in four corners of a plot. And I see that quite a bit. Four corners seem to be a, a popular, and you may only see two corners planted today. You may see one, but you may see stumps or evidence of the others, and that'll give you an idea that that plant perhaps belonged. And if time permits, which is always the hard one, observe the cemetery year round. What may have been pulled out as a weed in October was actually a perennial when it was in bloom, and you may have you know, destroyed the plant. Um, it may also be an heirloom plant, because old cemeteries are one of the best repositories for heirloom plants. And for all vegetation questions, I suggest consultation of a horticulturist, master gardener, or someone knowledgeable before you start uh, wholesale removal. So what's next? What do you do next? And as Jason mentioned, it's important to inventory and assess the condition of the vegetation before you start. So this would be the next step. The complexity of the inventory would depend upon the site, the budget, and the needs of the cemetery. It would also depend on the variety of plant material within the cemetery. The best scenario would be to map and photograph all the trees, shrubs, vines, yes, exactly, bulbs and perennials. However, for many sites, this is impossible or just not feasible at all, correct? <laughs> An alternative would be inventory all or most of the trees, especially the most mature and significant shrubs, vines, and herbaceous material. And when I mean significant, it could be a large patch, it could be in a prominent place, it could be an heirloom variety, those types of things. That would be the next scenario. Another scenario would be to inventory only the trees. Uh, since assessing the condition of these trees is one of the most important tasks that should be performed in cemetery preservation, in all cemetery preservation. 
And even if all you care about is the monuments, you should care about what might fall on them, and that is the trees. So you really should look up and see what's going on with those trees, okay? And again, here I recommend you get a certified arborist to do this that really knows how to evaluate the structural integrity of a tree and its health. A tree could be dead, but very structurally intact, and it's not as much of a threat as another one that could fall. And you can't even tell. So if, after you've completed whatever inventory and assessment you are able to do, you have the tools in place to look at a rehabilitation plan, which is a plan to recapture the vegetation's historic character. First on your list should be to trim those trees and to bring down the dead ones, the ones that are likely to be hazards, okay? You should also consider shrub rejuvenation, which can really liven up some of the shrubs that maybe were shaded out too much or are overgrown, and control the vines. During all of these activities, it's important to protect cemetery features during the process. Left unprotected, historic features can be irreversibly damaged. And if, if you, are, uh, you have enough historical documentation and you learn of, his, of his, uh, significant historic plantings and planting beds, you may consider replacing them. You may consider that if it's important to you, to your cemetery, it's to its interpretation or to the character you want to portray. The best approach to replacing missing plants is to develop a planting plan that provides guidance for replacing his missing historic plants. This is also a great thing if you have people that come to the cemetery and want to have a memorial tree or they, a garden club wants to plant a planting bed, you have a plan ready. And you can say, yes, if you'd like to do that, this is where we'd like it. This is a good spot for it. So this, list, this plan might include approved plants, plant locations, and guidelines for plant installation. As with the plan inventory, the plan can be very simple or very complex, all right, based on your budget and your ability to maintain the newly planted plants. Don't overplant if you can't maintain it. Don't do it. You know, it's a waste of money. And as always, regular maintenance is necessary to protect the newly planted vegetation. It's essential that cemetery managers, maintenance crews, and volunteers work together to take care of the cemetery vegetation. Everyone involved needs to understand the importance of proper maintenance techniques. For most historic landscapes, funding is the major issue related to proper maintenance. And as historic landscapes go, cemeteries are one of the most time-consuming landscapes to maintain. Trimming around monuments and markers is not only one of the most time-consuming uh, jobs, it can also be one of the most detrimental to stone features. When using a weed whacker, avoid contact with the base of the monument and other landscape features, and always use the thinnest line possible, so as to minimize any damage that might occur if the line comes into contact uh, in this case, uh, it was a mausoleum, but it could also be a marker. Um, Jason talked a bit about the mowers. An improperly run lawnmower can also be very destructive. This guy seems very proud, his new lawnmower in the cemetery there. Historic cemetery designs are generally incompatible with contemporary lawn mowing devices. Early lawn care practices were far more time consuming and probably completed less often than acceptable by, by today's standards. <laughs> Large riding lawnmowers used today often have difficulty maneuvering around and between cemetery features. And while riding lawnmowers used today effectively, efficiently cut the grass, if not operated with care, irreversible damage, as Jason mentioned, uh, can occur. The steel blades of a mower can scar and chip a flat headstone. Uh, in this case, it's the corner marker you can see up here. And then down here, do you see the tire tracks right across the ledger there? Another consideration is to when to mow and when not to mow. Historic cemeteries, as I mentioned, are known repositories for bulbs and other herbaceous material. And some may be naturally occurring or have naturalized in the lawn. If this is the case, consider skipping a mowing cycle when the plants are in bloom. Most people would agree that a slightly higher lawn with the flowers is more attractive than a clip lawn without them. We had a workshop last summer, a cemetery landscape maintenance workshop, where I believe, are they called rain lilies, the little copper ones? No, I don't know. I'm new to the area, excuse me. They're very small, similar to this, a little bit orange. And they were beautiful. They were all over during our workshop. The next week, I went out to take some pictures afterwards, and they were all gone. 
It's also important for maintenance staff or volunteer caretakers to know the difference between a weed and a desirable herbaceous plant. Otherwise, they may become victims of the weed whacker or the lawnmower. This might typically happen just before bloom or when only the plant's vegetation is visible. Now, many of you might know that these are iris in the January coming up, but not everybody would. Um, that same cemetery I was telling you about, part of the workshop is we planted some bulbs, some heirloom bulbs in the cemetery, and I was going back periodically to take pictures of them, and before they could even bloom, they had been, one area had been all weed whacked down. They never even bloomed. So educating, if, if you have, if you are able to do that, at the cemetery is an important thing. So, and finally, one of the most important jobs is to periodically remove all invasive plant material soon after it takes root. As with heirloom plants, invasive plants tend to survive in areas where it's difficult to mow or trim. Plants that survive in these locations, especially trees, uh, can, be very, uh, can be very detrimental as they grow up and mature and their roots will start affecting the monuments and markers. Well, I hope this presentation has perhaps answered a few questions you might have had about cemetery vegetation and given you an insight into the importance of maintaining cemetery vegetation.